Hi. So welcome. So welcome. How are you? I'm good. You? I'm good. Yay. We're here. I am Kim. Also known as Ginger. And I am Jocelyn. Also known as Pepper. Okay. So what are we wearing today? Oh, we, oh, me first. Um, I'm wearing, um, this is called Trapeze. Uh, it's by Laura Nelkin. Um, yeah, so this is neat. So you, so these, these three things, this one here, this one here, this one here, you did separately. Okay. And then you left, um, it started here in the center and then you left, um, all these stitches live and then you join them with this section here. Oh, this little, with the beads? With the beads, yeah, exactly. The beady lace section. Like right here. And then um, you picked up all the other edges and did the border. This has an I-cord border at the top and this kind of ruffly beaded border at the sides and the bottom. This is cool. It was a lot of fun. It was one of those mystery things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so um, I ended up running out of yarn and I never blocked it. So that's why my ruffles aren't... They're not... There I and I great. had to. I ran out of yarn, so I had to cut the edge short. Oh, okay. um, I, I used a sport weight yarn, and it was not as much yardage as the fingering that she recommended. But okay. I love the colors and the beads I love it, and everything. Yeah. So um, the pearl beads. There's actually two color beads, but you can't see the dark ones. Oh. See? Yeah, you can see those. <laughs> you can't see them at all. They're so matte. So that's a lesson for beads. Yeah, no, no matte beads in knitting, unless, you know, it's a really super bright color. But matte, just, you know, I don't think matte's a good... Well, and if this was on a lighter color, you'd be able to see them. Well, I think because these but are these pearl, have the shiny. they're pearl shiny and that they have that pearlescence look to it. So yeah. I think that's why they show up, but the, the matte ones don't at all. So I'm kind of glad they are where they are. Mm -hmm. um, but see, so they're like right oh, here. They are right there. You, see <laughs> yeah, you, know, you can't. It's like, oh well, whatever. Um, I've, I've, you know. So what would hit you and miss? What would you say a bead like if I were to put make something beaded and I needed I, to choose my colors? What just, would you recommend? I would always recommend the um, the AB finish, the Aurora Borealis finish on okay. an, on anything. But you know what? I do have another beaded project where I pick matte beads again. <laughs> <laughs> but are they a contrast color where they're going to well, show up? I think I think they are. I think I think they'll end up on a um, a lighter color yarn. Okay. So like this, you can't see them at all. Right, they blend in so well that yeah, it's really hard. It's stupid. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll see. I'll, that's like one of my other projects. That it was like a, I think a Stitches West from two years ago. Something I picked up a kid I picked up and I. I haven't done it yet. Okay, but we'll, well, I'll get there. So, anyways. Yeah. Um, well, I am wearing a top of my own design. Yay! Yay. Is that a pattern? Or just your It's design? not a pattern yet, but it will be there someday. It's so cute. Um, I'll stand up real quick. Because at the bottom. Ooh. So that matches up here. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I have this gorgeous Zauber ball where I love all the colors. Yeah. And so I just kind of made up the yoke as I went along mm -hmm. and then added, um, joined it here and then I added this plain color mm -hmm. and then I did the bottom. That looks Just, pretty. It's a plain, thank you. That, that's Tosh, isn't it? It is. So the plain color, I can't remember the name of the color, but it's a Tosh Merino light. Mm -hmm. And then this is the Zauber ball mm -hmm. up oh, here. Oh, I like how you used it up here too. Yeah. I'm a little it brings it in the edge. It's an ad, of course, it's the bottom too. So. Well, of course. That's, yeah, that brings it all together. Like I planned it that way. Yeah. Yeah. But it was kind of not ad, ad hoc, maybe, as you went? It was. Oh, okay. I totally just was like, oh, I'm going to keep making, oh, it sits right. Okay, well, now I'll put the bottom on. And Isn't that funny how you can just like, like that in crochet, but then... I can't make my brain think that way for knitting, really. <laughs> I don't know why. It, you would think it would be the same, like, geometry and spatial thinking, but for knitting, I cannot do it. I don't know. Because it's, because it just, just, we'll, we'll get back to this. Just remember, it's, it's a rounded neck and it's top down with increases. And you just did it. Right. You know, I couldn't do that with crochet. I wouldn't know where you know, where the increases would go. I guess you, I don't even know. Is it here? 
or they're not know. specific. What I each round, I just added a f stitch pattern that had a few more stitches in the pattern, and when I laid it flat, it made an oval. Okay. okay. And so I just wanted to, I just kept laying it flat, and making sure that it was laying flat. So I learned it was a uh, Myra Wood class. I had a, a creative crochet shawl pe uh, class with her at I love Stitches. Her. Oh yeah. my gosh. She's wonderful. It was amazing. And um, right after I had that class, I made this. And so I made the yoke the same way. Oh, okay. That she taught it was for nice the shawl. and fresh in your yeah. head. So oh, okay. it was like, okay, so make sure it's flat and just keep going. And you wow. can, yeah, it was really cool. Now, I don't know if the same rules apply with knitting. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe part of it is is I can't lay it out and look at it because it's always bunched up. Right, and with crochet, you only have the one loop. Right. So, oh yeah, that's it. I think that that's it. it. That might be it. So, that might be it. Anyways, so. moving on. Okay. Um, let's see. So, finished objects. Do you okay. have me? I we have a couple things, but not very many. All right. Uh, do I have a lot? Oh, guess what I did. What'd you do? I left the blanket at home. Oh, your square blanket. Oh. The Maybell Square. I have is this a the, bunch uh, of the red and gold? Yeah. Okay, well, we're, we're going to put a picture. I'll talk about it and I'll put pictures in. Um, so I made the squares according to the pattern, and my this was a blanket for my friend's birthday. She requested red and gold, and um, I got so many squares, and I really had planned to make a lot more squares, mm -hmm. but I didn't have the square pattern. I kept picking it up and putting it down, so I didn't have the square pattern memorized really and so I had to keep looking at the pattern every time I'd pick it up and it just became like ugh. so whatever I decided I was done making squares and so I actually but I wanted the blanket bigger so I made a big border for it with the same yarn with the same yarn uh -huh. and so the border's like a good foot it's good wide though. and it's gorgeous I love the border awesome so um yeah so I just continued the granny um like a granny pattern of the groups of three in the beginning of the border, and then I did some contrast longer stitches in V patterns to get the little the little um, peaks and valleys mm. pattern. So yeah, so it turned out really pretty, and of course I still haven't given it to her. It's been done for two weeks, and I keep telling her, I have your blanket. Well, send her a picture. No, I'll just I just have to drive it to her house. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, and you wonder how I get dressed every morning. Because well. I can't function sometimes. That's okay. <laughs> um, let's see, the other thing I have done, I call them my Wonder Woman socks. Woohoo! Aren't they awesome? They are awesome. So they're in my projects under the power you possess. Okay. But um, I originally made them, I was making them for Aaron, my husband, for 4th of July. He loves 4th of July and uh -huh. he loves wearing 4th of July socks. Um, but they are a tiny bit too small. Oh darn. I know. And so, well, they're too small for me too. Uh -oh. We have the same size foot. Okay. So what and are you so I, he was trying them on and, and he's all, oh my God, I hate to say it, but they're a tiny little bit short and they're a little tight. And I guess my gauge has gotten a little tighter as I've been oh, going yeah, on with yeah, knitting the, the socks. Um, and so I was thinking, well, I could take the toe out, I could add a little more, but since they're kind of tight around the foot, and so he's all, oh, and I'm all, well, if you're not going to wear them, that's okay. And I'm all, maybe I can fix them. And then my son said, can I have them? Oh, so he gets them? He gets them. Aww. So I said, of course you can. So he wore them for like three days straight. As Aww, soon as he got so them, cute. he loves them. So. <laughs> so those are the only things I've finished. That's it? That's it. Oh, okay. All right, so I guess it's my turn. Um, so I have, I, I showed this last time. It was, I, was it, I think it was on the needles. It was. Ooh, right, so this is it yeah. inside out. This is the, the brioche cowl, right? So um, so this is the inside of it, and here's the um, outside. Oh, it's so pretty. Right, but the, um, and I still, you know, have ends to even, and the block, it's kind of listing a little bit, leaning, I yeah. guess, because the, the stitch is kind of directional. I'm going around in a circle, but it's really So it cute. kind of becomes a bias as you're going. Yeah, so. <gasps> oh, that's right? so cool. Isn't that cool? And then you could, like, flip one side to show more of the, I don't know, that. 
yeah. more of the inside or the outside or whatever. It just it doesn't matter which right. side it's it shows. Totally reversible. It's totally reversible. Oh, that's so, so cool. I love that. This is my two favorite colors, pink and every color and rainbow. <laughs> my two favorite favorite colors. Oh, that turned out so well. Yeah. I love it. That's really cool. So I did that and then dun da da da. I finished my sort of finished <laughs> everything's partially done my goldfish memory oh. I know so I want to show the beginning first so you know it starts out with slip stitches and then it's stripes so it's three colors the hot pink and the speckly and the black so it's uh, Madeline Tosh Tosh Marina Light in Cactus Flower, Gemini Twins, and Dirty Panther. And so there's just lots of striping. So there, she has some slip stitches in the beginning that kind of, you know, get your interest going, but then it just stripes. And then you get this really cool lace thing, and then it starts striping again. And towards the end, I was just like, oh my god, I just cannot do any more stripes. So I dug out um, my mosaic book. I think it was a Barbara Walker, one of those Barbara... Barbara Walker Treasuries, mm -hmm. and I found this really simple um, slip stitch mosaic pattern that just got me through that last bit. So I switched to that and then ended with the lace. Just oh, like the pattern that's does. so cool! So yeah, it totally. You would never guess that this was not part of the pattern. I know it fits so well. Good job. It did. It did. I like it. So I need to block it, and then I'll get my ends. <laughs> but you know, so that. It's mostly done. I mean, you know, that all the knitting's done. Yeah. Yeah. So there's yeah. that. I'd say that's done. Okay. And then um, I took a workshop. Um, Green Planet Yarn had a, ends again, um, a little uh, workshop with Cat Bordy. And so we did these mitts. So here's one. This one's all done. This one I did in class. And then this one, I just have to weave in the ends again. But this one, I reversed the colors. So cool. I don't know if you can just see that there, yay! And so, so she had you do a different uh, technique. Yeah, so they're done sideways. Um, so they start like uh, I don't know. I guess down here. Well, no, down here. They start here, and you go okay. back and forth. And then this th this one has little, it's two colors, so you have a little slip stitch there and a little stripe action going there, and then here. This cuff is all um, the same color. All one color with short rows, so it has that flare, mm -hmm. right? Little gauntlet yeah. flare there. And the thumb was really, in this is all short rows. So this is the swatch at the beginning of the class. A little puppet. <laughs> See, so she had us do that, you know, to get do our gauge swatch and also to um, learn the, the thumb short rowing. So I did the German short row. So I actually showed her. I know. I showed, she'd seen it before. She'd seen a, a German short row before, but she, you know, hadn't used it a lot. And, um, you know, this one, you just do a wrap and turn, you just leave the wrap. Uh -huh. um, but I really like doing the German. So I showed it to her and I, you know, the, the trick is to pull that stitch over the needle so that you get that double stitch that's really a single stitch mm -hmm. that's just pulled over and I showed her you got to really yank that down. And Very Pink Knits has a really good tutorial on German short rows. Yeah. Um, so so she she was like, oh, you know, well, I don't know if she's just being gracious. She's probably yeah. just being gracious. She said, I, she said, I wasn't sure how that actually went and it's really easy to see because when you come back to it, you're like, why is there a yarn over there? Oh. And it's not a yarn over, it's, it's just the other part of the stitch and you just treat it like a um, like a single thing. stitch and you just keep going. Nice. So it's kind of fun. So, so she was fun to have a class with? Oh my god, yeah. She's brilliant. Yeah, I really, really enjoyed it. So yeah, a lot of fun. I think everyone enjoyed it. So very cool. Yeah, and everyone had different versions of... She had like three different patterns for us to use, so... Everyone had a different thing. So I want to do another one. Yeah. They fit perfectly because, nice. you know, you just knit until it it's done. I yeah. mean, until it fits. And then you just do this three needle wind off. Um, on this one, with the single color, she actually um, had directions for doing a garter stitch Kitchener. I know, you can't even see it. 
Wow. So it's right here. Huh. So um, you can't do that with the stripe because then you end up with an extra garter stitch. Okay. But um, but in a single, in a single thing, color, you, you, could, you could do it. Yeah. So the, the garter stitch Kitchener is just what you do on the front needle. The same, you just do the same thing on both needles. Instead of reversing. Instead of flipping them? Yeah, exactly. Oh, and that that's, might be easier. And that's a garter stitch. <laughs> that's a garter stitch Kitchener. Kitchener. Okay. It's just like, you know, how you knit on both sides. Right, you right. You just do that first. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, I know. So in theory it makes sense, but it actually works. works. Isn't that funny? <laughs> I know. Very cool. And then I have, so see, you had all the FOs last time. And so now I have all the FOs. I've had this mitt, um, I don't know. It was a shop sample for a little bit. That's been done for a long time. This one's been done for a long time. These are the storm cloud mitts. And it's got um, little beaded, um, I don't know, clusters, arches, clusters yeah, something. It's so pretty. It actually works like a brioche stitch. It's a slip yarn over. Oh. Um, slip the stitch yarn over, but you just let them stack and then um, pull up the arches and then in the middle of the arch is a bead. So um, we'll have um, close-ups yeah, of totally. this, but um, I'm gonna call it done, even though I still use That's it's, not done. It's almost done. So this is the, how you, you do it back and forth. It's done Oh, you flat. plan to leave this undone to show how it's made. Yes, exactly. So <laughs> it's, it's um, knit back and forth, but since the edges are garter stitch, it's a real piece of cake to seam that together because you just go back and forth, like zigzag across the garter bumps. The bumps. Um, and then I still have to pick up the thumb and finish the, the band at the thumb. Because I like to, did I do it? Oh, I guess I did do it separate. I mean, like not, or maybe I didn't. I don't know. Did I sew that? I don't know what I did. Because I could do it in the round. No, I did do it in the round. It's just jogged. All right, well, so I'm going to pick up my, um, my thumb here and then, you know, finish the thumb probably in the round. So there's not going to be a seam there, but definitely a seam here. And then I left, um, just here, let me do it again. When I seamed it, I left a little opening here. Cute. Yeah. I like so. that. I like these it's a lot. A room, but I know, I really love that stitch. It's a lot of... It's beautiful. It is, and it's not as hard as it as it I know, looks. it looks really complicated. It does, but it's not, and the, the, um, the pattern's free. And um, there's a whole page on how to do this stitch, and it's nicely drawn and everything. Nice. I mean, I, I don't know how he's able to give that away, but that's really nice of him. Well, and it's cool that you get to learn this new, somewhat complicated stitch and not have to worry about if you're nervous about knitting in the round or something. that You can yeah. just do it flat back and forth. You can actually really concentrate. Yeah, pattern. he actually says that you you can reverse everything and just do it in the round, but it's easier to do the the pull up on the wrong side. Yeah, so, so that's when why you're he, going back and forth, it it helps. So it's, they did it flat. On yeah, so he like just that. recommended the designer recommended you do it flat, and I was perfectly fine with that. So, cool. so that's that. I love those. Yeah, where are we now on my mitt? Oh, finally finished my socks. I Yay. do socks too. So I did these using my um, my bent um, DPN. Um, so these are the Susan Bates um, DPNs that um, I just bent. And I have like a full set of videos now on um, how I bent the needles and how I uh, knit the socks on the bent needles from cuff to toe. Awesome. So um, even down to the Kitchener. Okay, can you show me really quick how to hold these? Oh, well, okay, I can show just you. Just quick, just even just in my hand. Well, I, I don't know where to put my fingers. I have a project on curved needles. I can show you on that. Do you? I do. Okay. All right, so well, should I show it to you now? Yeah. Okay, let me grab we it. We can just break this part. Okay. Uh, let's see, where are they? Oh, so you were doing your, what is it? Something Power Socks? The power you possess. And I'm doing, I don't know how we do this. Like, maybe we talk to each other and then start oh, channeling each other or something. I'm doing a Wonder Beanie. 
<laughs> <laughs> so these are on the uh, Neko needles. They're the plastic. This is where you know, you actually got the idea to bend the um, the Susan Bates things. Right. Um, so these are bigger. These are the hat size ones. So basically the stitches go on um, two of the needles like this. And um, the key to holding these correctly and starting, let's see, where's my yarn, um, is the needle that you're going to be knitting off of, you squish all, and I think I used this in my video, I say sco scooch, you scooch them all onto one side. Okay. Like that, and leave this one alone. And then okay. you have this one, and you're holding it right here with one side, and you're just knitting them like this, like this. Okay. Right, so that's how I hold them, right? And then even this one, I'm doing two colors. So yeah. I'm holding my white on my left and under and my blue on my right and over. And I'm not really sure where I am in the pattern, but basically, um, I, you know, knit it like that. Huh. I think I'm I think if I'm gonna work on the bents, I need, it might be a good idea to start with the bigger ones. Maybe, I feel like, and do a hat. Yeah, I feel like the little guys, I couldn't figure out like where, like I was trying to hold them like this and have them, you know, with yeah. all my fingers around, but if, I need to pretend that they're like I, more like that. Yeah, I guess I hold them like little, my, that curve is hugging my pinky. Okay. So I'm all right. usually, or maybe like this, because these are smaller, so I can't get all my fingers in there. Okay. So, so you just let that you... this part free, and then yeah. it's easier. I'll try it again, because mm -hmm. I love the idea of it. Yeah. So. Yeah, and definitely, I tried to knit a hat, or I actually did that last hat that I did. Mm -hmm. I think a couple episodes ago, I knit on um, these Neko's. Um, as well, but I did it on the sock ones mm -hmm. and the stitches kept falling off. Oh, so yeah. um, we just started carrying these um, in at the shop. So um, yeah, maybe got, I'll get a set of the hat ones. And the hat can ones are, are great because they're they're so much bigger. Right? Yeah. So I wouldn't knit socks on that, but I mean no, but you, it's totally a good place to start. Yeah. Awesome. So yay. So. These are, what pattern are these? Um, those are the Rose City Rollers, okay. and they're little, um, you know, rolled cuffs. They're teeny little socklets. Um, so, and so and you I made used... the toe the same color as the little cuff. Yeah, I had, these are all leftover yarns from different projects. I like have lots of leftover fingering weight yarn, so. From... You what? do? Like, wh who has that, huh? <laughs> I can't believe it. <laughs> so, see, I think, I think that's it. Okay. Yay. Well, so. let's see. So I have, oh, every color blanket. So on. So these are our other whips. These are my other whips. These yeah. are mine. So on some of the podcasts that I've been watching, they are primarily knitters, but they have lots of sock yarn left over. So they're making like cozy memory blankets. I know, so yeah. A little crocheted. So what do you do with your leftover oh. sock? <laughs> well, right now it's all, it's all in a big, I don't know. So this actually is my every color blanket that I decided I was going to do because I couldn't figure out what I wanted to make with um, these. So these are actually the Madeline Tosh sample. Weren't you doing something else with those? I was, but I, ch I took it out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't like it. Okay. So these are the little Madeline Tosh sample. It's like dreads. a color card. They're dreads. We call it the dreads. Yeah. That, um, that they send, and when the last shop I worked at closed, I got the whole thing, which I was super happy about. Mm -hmm. um, so I decided I was gonna do granny squares oh, and make a blanket. Oh. So I'm using two colors for each one, and they're not exactly symmetrical. I just go until I run out. But I love it. It kind of satisfies my need to knit every single color in the world or to crochet every single color because they're just all so pretty. Oh. So I don't have to pick one. And it's just granny all. squares and you're going to put them together. Yep. I think I that's am. what I got that um, uh, opal advent box. Yes. Where I got those little cute little mini yes. stains, like one every day, but I wasn't yeah. sure what I was going to do with it. And I think, I think maybe I'll do that. I'll do like, I was, I was either going to do mitered squares. Mm-hmm. 
um, knitted mitered squares or granny squares. Yeah. Maybe you'll do mitered squares still. I don't know. Whatever. But it's, you know, the same thing. It's, it's that stripey yarn. Right. Just every color. Every color. I know. I've been watching um, the Yarn Hoarder podcast. She's hysterical. <laughs> I love her so much. Um, oh my God. I can't believe I just said that because she says that all the time. She'll, I love it so much. That's like... 30 her times throughout her. Oh. I can't believe I just said that. Yarn hoarder. I'm going to have to check her out. <laughs> Such a dork. Anyway, so um, there's other people that are making crocheted blankets with their leftovers, but um, she has a like a crochet blanket along thing in her group. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to make one and I'm oh. going to join it. Yay. Yay. So thank you, Miss Yarn Hoarder Amber. Yay. So anyway, so that's that. Um, let's see, and then I also have a couple socks, so I went, started a pair of vanilla socks for Erin, so this is, I got one done. Okay, and then these are bigger now, are you casting on more? I started casting on more, so I'm casting on 72. Oh, that's a good size. Um, and then I can knit as tight as I want and then yeah. that seems to fit better so I'm one and a half kind of. Oh what a nifty little DPN holder you have there. Oh my gosh I wonder where I caught it. <laughs> <laughs> We're so, having so much fun. I know I made this did I don't know if I said before but this was a I had made Elisa a dress yeah. my daughter when she was like two. A leftover fabric. Yeah so it was a floral dress and then the hem was a really wide hem in the polka dots. Aww. Oh my god it was the cutest thing on the earth. Aww. Um so I made that to remind me Yay. of her cute little dress. So anyway, so that's one pair of socks. And then I couldn't stand it. I had to start because I just love... <gasps> oh, right! Oh. That was really bright. I know. So I started a Hermione's Everyday Sock with that. Yay. And I'm using a Magic Loop instead oh. of DPNs. All right. And that fits in the DPN thingy too. It does. Oh. So I just hang the tail out. Um, but these are fun. It's an easy pattern to memorize. Um, you're really getting into socks now. Well, it's kind of nice just to have something that I don't have to really think about. think about. That's true. So I'll probably do a heavily patterned one. I have a couple patterns that I think are gorgeous, but I know they're just going to take forever. So they're okay. not going to be that little relaxing, just knit some stuff okay. type of a thing. I'll have to concentrate on those. But yeah, so I've been doing this and I have lots of colors. I mean, l many skeins of striping sock yarn meant for socks not just like hand dyed fingering weight yarn but actual sock sock yarn um and it's fun and honestly i have made so many shawls over the last like year and a oh, half oh i know we all have because we've been having Dude. the shawl along right. at, at work it's and been so, so popular it's been so fun but i don't even know how many shawls i have now and i can't i just don't even have room to put them anywhere <laughs> <laughs> my, my closet's like this big on, okay. in the first place, so yeah. I need to find something else. And these socks will be way more useful than I feel like I can make something I'll wear or Aaron will wear every single day. There you go. So that's my theory behind the socks. All right. Okay. So here. here my here. goodness, I'm so chatty. Okay. So then uh, this is my charity Linus blanket, and I made the bag. I know, we I went to uh, fabric. Heart in Santa, in Cruz, Santa Cruz and found that fabric. That yeah. was a lot of fun. I want a skirt out of this fabric with all the little heads on it. We should do a little field trip with the camera. Oh, that'd be so fun. Yeah. Okay, so I, it's just a granny stripe. I showed some of this before, but this is how far I am. So pretty. Yeah. So are you doing that with your kids or are you just doing it? No, they don't want to do it. Oh, crap. Well, well, darn. I know. Darn, you have to like work on it on your own. I love that. It's so cute. I think I might get a second one. Right. And make it bigger. So. Oh, really? Okay. So yeah. this is going to be for Project Linus. This is Project Linus. Yay. Yeah, I think because this is going to be a funny. I need a second one. It needs to be bigger. Okay. So that's that one. Yay. And that's, you know, of course, a. I can do in my sleep kind of a thing because it's just crocheting. Uh oh. Uh, is it in there? No, I don't know what this is for. I thought you just pulled it out of that. I don't know. One of my pro oh, it goes in this. One of my projects doesn't have a hook. No. Okay, so the last thing I'm working on right now, finally. Two things. One thing. Two things. 
Um, well, because you have too many shawls. Oh. So I do have the Albuquerque Sunset shawl, but I think I'm going to frog it. I love the yarn and I love the pattern, but I have so many shawls. But I think I'm going to use that yarn to make another sample of one of my own designs instead. Yeah, that'll so, work. Yeah. Aww. So I'm going to do that. Um, so yeah, that's on my list. I'm not all that excited about that project. I love the shawl. I mean, the pattern's beautiful. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. I totally love it. And I love the yarn. But like I say, too many shawls. Too many shawls right now. Oh, okay. Um, so my last thing I have to talk about that is in progress is my Junimon sweater, which has started up again. So thanks to you. And so this is the knit. This is my knitted, A knitted sweater. Um, and is that the back? That's the back. This is, this is the, the back facing us. This okay. is the front here. Mm -hmm. Um, I tried it on. It totally fits. The sleeves totally fit. Yay. I knit down a little bit on one sleeve just to make sure. Okay. Totally fitting. Um, I think I'm going to, well, I know I'm going to make modifications to the bottom of the sweater because it's kind of a straight design. Uh-huh. Um, and I'm shaped like this instead. Okay, so you're just gonna maybe do um, increases? <laughs> yes, so I'm right. gonna do a few increases to measure down, um, I mean to fit me a little bit better so I don't have to worry about it clinging in the wrong places. Oh yeah, that'd be good. Um, and so what I did was I measured myself like right under my bust line and then at a couple inch intervals going all the way down to mm -hmm. see how much was it I would need to increase mm -hmm. and then I measured your gauge the sweater yeah and where it was and I figured okay well between here and here my sweater has to grow by three inches oh, okay so then I div just took the three and divided it by the gauge uh -huh. of inches uh -huh. and figured I had to add so many stitches. So many stitches. Evenly around. Evenly around. Perfect. So like every four, I'm so proud of myself. I know. So every four rows, uh -huh. I'm adding four stitches. Okay. And um, by the time I get down to where it kind of tapers out and needs to straighten out again, then that should do it. Yeah, that should do it. Awesome. Yay. Yay. So yes, but while it's been a hundred, I don't want to be working on this. Oh, I know. 100 degrees. I know. Well, it's kind of cooled down a little bit. I know. So that is going well. I'm very happy with that. That's all I have. Okay. That I'm working on, kind of, but that's what I brought. All right. So you saw my Wonder Beanie, because um, I showed you how I'm working on that. My, my, yes. My beanie dropped. Let me put my... Let me get dressed again before I do this, because I was wearing all my foes. Okay. So... Um, in the shop, and we're talking about the shop a lot today. Because um, we work there. Yeah, because we work there. And, you know, <laughs> we knit there. And people come in and they want inspiration. So, um, I found this pattern, like, I think December-ish. This wherewithal, wherewithal pattern booklet came out. And it uses um, one each of the shibuis. The, the main shibuis that we carry. The the silk cloud, which is a mohair, kid mohair, silk kid mohair. Mm -hmm. And um, the sema, which is a baby alpaca blend, mm -hmm. I guess. And then, um, look, all this stuff is in here. The pebble, which I love. Yeah. Um, so this like is tweedy, tweedy, looser ply. It's got silk and, it's and pretty. merino and maybe alpaca too. But, um, but the three of them together. Um, in a in a just a another shawl, but it's kind of like a scarfy shawl. So right, it's a, a like a bias rectangle. It's a bias rectangle. It's called Riverine, and it's and beautiful. It is beautiful. So it starts off with the pebble. So um, everyone and their mother has started this thing, and um, you know I found the pattern, and Beth knitted the sample, and as soon as the sample went off, people everybody wants it. Has been wanting to make it. So. Well, and it's it's. It stripes diagonally, texturally, because yeah. the you use the same color way of the yarn, but each one has such a distinct texture when you 
stripe it, you can really see. Yeah, and it's the, on, on big needles. I mean, this is like super light fingering, almost heavy lace uh -huh. weight, but you're using size six needles. So it's this really sheer fabric. Yes, and it's um, like a cloud. So, yes. And it's just very. I <laughs> know, <laughs> we're seeing our hands. <laughs> <laughs> I know, we're seeing our hands. It totally is though, and it everyone is. It's loves a cloud. it. It's gorgeous. Yeah. It is gorgeous. And we just got a bunch of new colorways in. They, there's, um, I got velvet, and somebody else, or a new color that came in was suit, which is a super oh, dark navy. navy. Yeah. And then tango, which is like a lipstick red. Oh, fun. It's really, really cool. Oh, and I think somebody else is doing. A lot of people are doing fog and um which is like a silvery yeah, gray. Yeah. Uh-huh. And um like the teals. Mm -hmm. Um but somebody else is doing burgundy. There's a burgundy Ooh, wine pretty. color. It's really pretty. Pretty. So. so if you don't know Shibui, they have one of their things is texture. Yeah. So they have a lot of patterns that are monochromatic but they're very textural and they really, really use like the lightness of the silk cloud versus a heavier, tweedy or more rustic, you know, of the pebble. And they like to play those textures against each other. And it, just by using the same color, it's just really, really beautiful, beautiful patterns. And it's nice yarn to work with. Oh, so nice. Yeah. So nice. Yeah. So there you go. So that one I started, you know, after I finished all that other so my next thing is uh, something I've been working on for a while. We had a abstract fiber trunk show. Um, oh, a while back. And yeah, I, yeah. So Ooh. this is one of the. This is I think this is called Aviation or Aviator or something like that. And then this Pretty. is this one's a little black dress. And then so I'm doing um, a pattern called Drogue. Another shawl. See, I'm not sick of the shawls. I love shawls. So I'm not tired of them yet. So it starts out here, the top. This is the top of it. And then there's short rows to make that triangle. And then you, there's a little eyelet row here and you start this. And then the next part is um, short rows to do like this wing thing oh. on this side. And then, then you pick it up again and you do it on the other side. Oh, cool. So, um, but it's got like all these nautical terms in it. So um, I think uh, Tyler, the designer, either sails or has sailed or, I don't know, maybe just looked up all the nautical terms for sailing. <laughs> but So I put it I put it in this bag that um, Kathleen, Kathleen makes these bags, and this one has pirates on it. So this is like my pirate drogue. That's so funny. I know. So um, I love that bag. It's so yeah, cute. Yeah, it's very cute. Pirate so that's... Skeletons. I know, so I'm working on that. Um, I'm trying to pick that up again. Um, Riverine, and that's it, except, should we talk about my field trip? I want to hear all about your field trip, because I, I haven't heard yet. I know, so we uh, uh, went, or I went to um, the Black Sheep Gathering. Okay. And this is up in Eugene, Oregon. And I have a niece up there now, so um, it was just like, we need to go. I have never been to Oregon, ever. Oh, it's really? my first time to Oregon. Oh. I know, it's like right, you know. It's right there. Right there. <laughs> I know, you don't, don't It's have to north go that of us far. by about eight hours. Yeah, right? yeah, it's not bad at all. And um, so. But it's, it's a totally other world, isn't it? It is. They have I mean, so as, soon many as, trees. as soon as you cross the border, I mean, you know, so you know, you you get to Shasta, and then um, which is still in California, but then everything starts to turn green. Right. About there. Right. And, and it's just like all of a sudden, every there's forest. Forest and mountains. It was so. It, I when I drove up there, I just was like, what. Wait, all of us it's like boom yeah it is pretty pretty <laughs> sudden pretty it's sudden pretty cool. yeah exactly it's like all deserty um it redding or something yeah. and then and then all of a sudden you start hitting chasta and um the lake everything all that water yeah um and then even like when we when we came back through um Med Medford, mm -hmm. you know, so they have like all those. They're kind of nestled in between these mountains and stuff. They had thunder showers. Oh, really? Yeah, just oh, like neat. you know, we, that's the kind of weather that people have in the um, 
In the Midwest. In the Midwest. And on the East Coast. And exactly. Even everybody but us. Everyone but has us. Has thunderstorms. Has thunderstorms, exactly. So, and and fortunately I knew what a thunder, because I had been to Nashville and they had a thunderstorm where it was like 20 minutes. And it was just so surprising to me that, you know, it was pouring down rain and I'm thinking, I have to get to my car. You know, this is, this could take hours. Um, and someone goes, oh no, it'll be done in about 20 minutes. It's just going to swoop on through. I'm like, you're kidding me. And it did. And that's what this did over at Medford. It was just, it's amazing yeah. how it does that. It's like dry, then wet all of a sudden, then dry again. I love a good thunderstorm. That's it's one of my favorite things really in the world. It's really weird. So weird, yeah, but yeah. so we're driving up and um, I, I, I knew I had planned out, you know, like when, what time we would be where. And um, I found a yarn store, uh, I think it's, I think it was in Reading. I don't know. You, you, you bus street yarns, um, or knit shop or something. You, it's, and it's on Yuba street. Y U B A. Right. But the shop is called E U E B A A oh, street. Ba. Oh my Yuba. gosh. And I've got pictures. How cute. So, um, uh, it was a cute little shop. Um, and you know they had an amazing shibui wall. Did they? Yeah. How so fun. and and a lot of other interesting things. And I um, got some. You know, I, I love how you know, all the yarn shops are. They have like really cool samples. Mm -hmm. So um, I think there was one sample called Geometric Shawl that mm -hmm. I now I want to do um, by Very Busy Monkey. Oh yeah. G Geo Geo something. I don't know. It's got to do with ge the geological shawl. Maybe um, another shawl, but whatever. Um, and then, you know, we cross the border and we get near Ashland. And I just kind of had a feeling. And I'm just like, I think there's a yarn store here, even though I wasn't looking. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, <laughs> I know exactly. I'm like, go on my phone. I'm just like, oh, honey, you just missed the exit. You know, and actually we were between exits um, to Ashland. So um, I went to Ashland and I got, um, <laughs> I know, and I, but we were at Webster's. Oh my gosh, you have a yarn store at ESP. I, something like that, and I found, <laughs> I found this fiber, and I'll let you know what it's going to be Ooh, later, but very I found fun. this fiber and some books, so um, I was just really excited, and they, they had cute, cute samples too. Um, and then I got to Black Sheep. And um, there were uh, animals, there were sheep, and goats, and alpaca, and then um, they had, in the market, they had this spinning corral, and people were in there spinning on their spinning oh, wheels, and it's a cute little market, so, you know, I think it was a little bigger than the, the Vogue knitting one, or maybe it was the same size, um, you know, so vendors and stuff, but they mm -hmm. had, you know, different things, so... Um, the yarn that mm -hmm. I got you. Yeah. Um, she made a finder fade. Oh. So we have a picture of that. Cool. Um, and then, you know, lots of soap makers and spinning wheels everywhere. Um, electric spinning wheels, regular spinning wheels, spindles. So um, it was definitely more aimed towards fleece and spinning. And weaving. And weaving yeah. than like stitches is really more knit knitting and, and, and hand dyed yarn. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of indie dyed yeah. yarn. But so there were some indie dyed yarn there because that's what I got you. Right. But there was, you know, more like needle felting. Oh, stuff. fun. So yeah. Um, let's see. So what else did I get? I At the market, um, I got. Um, Mosaic Moon. This is, uh, they deconstructed one of their colorways. Oh, fun. Yeah, so it's got, um, like, one of the colorways. So all the colors in that colorway, but on separate skeins. So this is Rihanna. So I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it, but it's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven half skeins, 50 gram skeins of DK. Oh, cool. So that'll be a good something. Maybe yeah. not a shawl. <laughs> this is DK. So maybe a cute top or something. A stripey. That's a stripey top or something. Oh, right? Yeah. So, um, and, oh, and I got, I forgot about this. I got more fiber. Did you know that Malabrigo dyes fiber? This is a, it's 
either for spinning or needle felting because it's not super wash. Oh. Isn't that pretty? This is this is Cereza. I love their color names. This is Pluomo. And, and that one's Arco Iris. Iris. And that, that means um, rainbow. Oh, is that what it means? Yeah, that's what it means. Cereza's cherries. Pluomo's uh, lead. I don't know. Oh, so that makes sense. Because it's color. grayish. Yeah, it's gray. So, um, this... Uh, Will you actually like spin yarn with this? I don't know if I'm going to spin yarn with that or if I'm going to needle felt with it. I think it'd be really neat to needle felt with it. I think so I could too, spin with it because it's a whole, is it four ounces? It or? says four ounces. Four ounces. So I could um, spin it into something, two ply, something like that. I think you might need to teach me how to spin. It's pretty. Oh yeah. I don't know how. It's fun. Did you ever, when you were little, did you ever take cotton balls and pull the strands out and spin it no i don't think thumb. i ever did that but we do do that when we're teaching kids oh do you yeah 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 that's yeah, what we do to I teach did. kids i wonder if we learned that in campfire girls or something i think maybe maybe that's... because we yeah we used to do just for that was one of the crazy silly things we used to do and not crazy but you know to keep yourself from getting bored in class that and making fake fingernails in the groove of your ruler with elmer's glue did you ever do that no <laughs> We always weird, used to right? fill the groove of our ruler with Elmer's glue, and when it dried, you could cut little fake fingernails out of it. <laughs> so this is like the, the... the So the ruler is like this, and down the middle there was so usually like, like a groove yeah. like that, and we would just put the glue in there and stick it in our desk. And then cut it. And then we'd cut it and, and glue it onto our fingers. How funny. No, I never really did that. You're weird. I know. <laughs> And then, oh, I got this. We, of course, we're in, in um, we're in Oregon, and Eugene's just like an hour, hour and a half south of Portland, and we went to Powell's Books. Oh, I love Powell's oh, Books. Powell's I mean, you know, I've always known about it, and you know, it's just one of those bucket list kind of things to do. Right. So, so tell if nobody, if people don't know, Powell's is is it like a city block? It's it's just a a big four story building. It's a bookstore. Yeah, and it's, it's huge. Huge. It's huge. And it, I went there a few years ago. Um, my friend Melissa lives in Portland. Excuse you. <laughs> Phone. Um, so I went to Powell's a few years ago. My uh -huh. friend Melissa lives in Portland. Uh -huh. Hi, Melly. Um, and yeah, we I went. Oh, God, I never want to leave. I know we we didn't. There was I was there with my my husband and my brother in law and his girlfriend, and you know so we all just split up. Yeah. Because there's no way we're gonna go walk around with each other. <laughs> um, so I went straight to the fourth floor um, where the needlework books were and stuff. But then then when I went in line, um, they had these book bags, and this I had to have it. I mean it was. Can you see? So like it's this sewing machine but see that's the front you know and there's a little pocket here but here's the back and the back looks like the back of the sewing machine and then, <laughs> they didn't stop there here's the side you know with the little drive whatever thingy you know where you turn oh my um, god the thing and then this here's so the cool. other side where the needle is right and then um the top of the sewing machine and no. the bottom. It's all of it. It's 3D. I mean, ah, isn't that hilarious? I, I had to have it. I love it. I know. I love it. Wait, does it tell who makes these yeah. in case people want to know? It's Blue, Blue, Q. Blue Q. And they do have them online. So. BlueQ.com. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And 1% of the sale of this bag supports environmental initiatives around the globe. Yay. Oh, Isn't that fun? BlueQ.com. Wow. I know. That is great yeah so you know uh we i i had a lot of fun it was it was good and then i guess the last thing i didn't get this at um oh i didn't get this at on my trip but i i got it recently this is like my new acquisition i think that wild it's um frabjus fibers it's called three feet of sheet and this is the colorway here is um inspired by the fashions as seen in hunger games so if you think of what's your name again effie trinket effie trinket you know yes. so 
So I don't know, make like, I don't know, little things. So if you're wondering what I'm going to do with all this fiber. I am because normally you come back with yarns and yarns and yarns. Yeah, well I have a lot of yarn and shawls. So I started a new thing. And then, you know, Felty, look at my sheepy. Look oh at that, God. they're like cute. It's little sheep. Oh my god. So yeah, so I started, I started that, this is a kit. This is a like a super be beginner kit. I've never really done needle felting before. And it, what it does, it, you know, it comes with instructions. And then it comes with an already felted egg shape. Nice. Right? So, yeah. so that's the body. And then it comes with um, locks um, to, they're like, I think they're mohair locks. Um, to put you start that with the on the egg and then you start making these tubes um, with a, another fiber this is um, it's shaped into an egg but it's really just loose fiber Let's see if I can find the end here oh I know another thing to do I know. but it's so much that fun looks like so much see so so here's the fiber um, to make uh, the the face and the um, ears. I added a tail to it, and then look it. He's got a tail he's so and cute. his feet and stuff. So um, and then you know with my the new fiber that I got at Ashland, um, I did the eyes. They, this doesn't the pattern doesn't call their eyelids. Oh, they don't have any eyes. They don't have any eyes, but I I added the eyes. That's really I cute. Like it. He has like lids too. Oh, that's cute. So, so I'm gonna make his Let me see this. his friend. Oh, it's not as hard as I thought. No, they're um, very soft. So last or weekend before last, I guess when we were working, Renata had a, a needle class. felting class because mm -hmm. we have the kits at work for the wool buddies. Do you have one? I have. Yeah. Let's see here. This is these kits. This is um, the moose kit. So right. there's so many designs in this, and I always want to do one, yeah. but I haven't ever gotten one yet. Oh, and there, yeah. Now I'm totally gonna get one. Right, so this is what a normal kit comes with. Instructions with photos, um, fiber to make your item, and then um, it comes with, not this tin, but a, a set of needles for the needle needles felting, for the felting, right? And so then other things that you might need or want are, um, these little protector things, and yes, I've stabbed myself already. <laughs> so these little... So like a thimble. Sort, yeah, sort they're of. just so that you could still feel things, right? And then even like, I've been using the skewer yeah. for fine work. So if I'm, to hold it down, right? So if you have the needles, right? If I want to hold something down and you're poke, 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 Oh, poke, instead poke, of poke. using your fingers well, there so you don't stab yourself. If it's, you're this doing something super, super tiny, like... Uh -huh. That eyeball, you know, you don't want to put your finger right there. And yeah. Yeah. So sometimes I'll use. You oh, know, that's a good idea. The skewer. I was just like, you know, this was part of the instructions here. Okay. They have you roll the fiber on the skewer to, to make, make the these shapes. these tubes. Okay. So to make the tubes. So that's like you know really really elementary mm -hmm. I guess shaping um, that that you do. So um, yeah. So the, there's you know, the needles and other things that you can get. So now that I'm all about the tools, I'm all about acquiring the, the, the stuff. tools and the books and everything yeah. you need, right? So here's a five needle holder and then a three needle holder, which I think you could change it to two or one. I'm going to change it to two so that I have two needles together. I can do straight lines, right? Oh, the okay. five one's really great for doing, you know, like say if I'm attaching the fiber to the body. It's just faster to have that many needles all at once. Uh -huh. And then um, I just found this single one because it's, you know, it's kind of hard to hold that just thing. The little, just the just little, the little tiny, metal part, yeah. you know, your, your muscles. So right this is kind of like a handle for the, for this, for a, for single, a single needle. needle. Yeah. So it's easier to hold on to. Yeah. So these are all by Clover and I um, felt on just a styrofoam square. Uh -huh. You know, really stiff stuff from Square, but they have, you know, these um, brushes. I keep everything in this stuff so it doesn't get all dusty, but you could use these, right? So that's a, a service that you can... So you'd put this on there, and yeah. if this was the needle, you'd be... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or you could make little, like, 
pre-make the eyes directly on here. Okay. Right? And then attach them. Yeah, and I right. think at, at work we have like foam yeah, blocks foam that they blocks. use in the class. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can do the foam blocks or bigger foam blocks. I have like some old packing material, like, you know, the, the VCRs that, yeah. you, know, you whatever. Okay. Computers, whatever thing that you got big thing that you got that was packed in styrofoam. Okay. Um, you know, you save that. that too. Yeah, so. Nice. Yeah, so that's been a lot of fun for me. I've been enjoying that. And uh, so that, this, this fiber that I originally got at, um, in Ashland uh -huh. is gonna be my Totoro. <gasps> right, so there's the white for the base, and then there's gray and blue because I want to make his little blue friend, yeah. and black for details, and also the, the little soot sprites. So, so that's, that's what this is. That's so cute. Yeah, so that's so fun. I know Renata already made her Totoro. It's so cute. Did you see it? Yes, I did it see really, it. Really it's cute. adorable. So it's adorable. And that's and then, my new thing. Yeah. I know. You know what? It's probably going to become my new thing, too, because after watching that class, and I had seen the class before, and I'd seen the kits, like I said, um, but Renata had made a couple of things. She made the Totoro, then she used um, a cookie cutter and needle felted in it to make a heart shape. Yeah. Um, and so she's all, oh, go on Pinterest and look up the needle felting and the cookie cutter thing. So, of course. Of course, I have a new board that has like 800 entries of cookie cutter things because <laughs> I have a bin that's like 32 gallon bin full of cookie cutters um so I have an alphabet set of the cookie cutters so I'm gonna make all our initials and make Christmas ornaments yeah so that's so I've already done it all in my head okay never needle felted anything well, but it's it, done up here so once you start it's um it it's pretty like it's so really much fun. it's really easy I I wasn't you know I was hesitant about it because I thought, oh, it's not going to turn out right. I mean, we all do this to ourselves, right? When we learn a new thing, oh, I can't do it, or um, you just gotta, you just gotta dive in, keep and try going, it. Yeah. and just because you'll find that it's not as hard as you think, mm -hmm. and you're not as as bad as you think. You're actually a lot better. Yeah, yeah. We, I think we do this to ourselves. We do, but you know what? That brings up. Um, in my, like, I notice in our classes when we're teaching beginning knitting or beginning crocheting, mm -hmm. um, you know, 90% of the students are adults. And so I always tell people, you know, because they beat themselves up, like, I can't get it, why, I'm, why can't I do this right away? And as adults, we don't learn new things very often, right? As right. kids, Kids are always learning Constantly. something new all the time. So for them to not know how to do something, it's not that big of a deal because they're just constantly learning things. But as an adult, to learn something new, it doesn't happen that often. Right. So they are very, you know, a lot of the times they get upset with themselves and like, oh, this is so, you know, oh, I'm not good at this, like you're saying. But it's, you know, I always just try to remind. It's not a race. So one thing we always say, you know, it's not a race, mm -hmm. it's fun, right? it's a hobby, but as adults, you know, since we very rarely do learn new things like this, they, you know, students can tend to feel like, I don't have this feeling very often of, I don't know what I'm doing, mm -hmm. and there's other people here who might be judging me, you know, depending, even if you're not like an insecure person, if you haven't learned something new recently, you still will feel that uncertainty so right. we always just try and reinforce that you know yeah adults don't learn new things very often right and you have to think about um i think we're talking about consequences of our you know our actions our decisions with the knitting the crochet the needle felting or whatever i mean you know if you get it wrong it's pretty easy to fix a mistake right and it's not you know it's it's not scary it's not as scary I don't know right I would say it's just yarn yeah and Fiber. it's a hobby and it's fun and yes you want to do well and yes you want to learn things the right way but don't beat yourself up over it right because you'll get not, better if you're not having fun then what's the point really right right so have fun and just keep doing it and you'll yeah. everything will make you better exactly Every. I still I learn something from everything I make yeah. And so. look, this is my first thing. Look how cute. <laughs> <laughs> I 
right now. I want you, let's, after we're done, let's learn this right now. Okay. <laughs> this is so cute. <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, well, I think that's it. Are we? we so, we um, my field trip. Needle yeah. Field trip. So uh, we want to make sure to let you know if you have questions. Um, ask us in our Ravelry group. Mm -hmm. um, if you have something you want us to talk about, give us suggestions. Oh in yeah, the for group. future episodes. I don't yeah. even know what we're going to talk about next time. We'll I know. Think about um, it. We had a suggestion to talk about obscure patterns. Ooh. So okay. that might be something we can we'll think go, about. We'll but go look up that. Look, yeah. Look up. Um, so let us know what you want to hear, and then um, don't forget the crochet it along for the lace for our group for right. lace lace baby. Right. I'll cast on this Please. week. Please. Yeah. Um, and then we we have our in-person uh, knit along at Green Planet Yarn for the Romy Hill and Lorna's Laces and Knit More Girls uh, local yarn store knit along. Yep. Starting August August first. Yep. Um, and then subscribe if you want to be notified when we have a new episode up. Yeah. You can be one of our one of our people. Yes, on our new channel, Yay. the Ginger and Pepper Yarn Cast. Yay! Yay for on us. YouTube. I'm too. so excited. Yeah. I know, that's so fun. All right. All right. Is that it? Yep. Okay. Say goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.